Land-based oyster culture. Why? Why do it? Well, if you look at any form of oyster farming, ranching styles, there's so many uncontrollable factors. The return on investment because of the labour is very high and therefore you, you're always going to struggle. So what you need to do, or what I figured that is essential, is improving the return per labour unit and per cost of farming. That's basically what uh, was driving the need for land-based oyster culture. It gives you much more control and allows you to increase the amount of sales per labour unit. Okay, so land-based oyster farming is simply that. For example, uh, you take a tank, you put oysters in it, uh, and you supply the amount of food required and the flow rate required, you get increased growth rate. You get increased growth rate because, for a start, oysters are no longer intertidal. So they, their growth rate's increased, their environment suffers far less stress, and consequently the growth rate improves out of sight. So what we've found is that you can take an oyster to a market size so that the, the, the growth, the shell growth, can be uh, at market size in about nine months. It's a completely different oyster. The shell is thinner and therefore needs a little bit of care, but the overall product is essentially a perfect shape every time. If we take that one step further, we uh, can now look at a tank. We supply water, and in that water is our food. So we need a culture system for food. Water in, trays of oysters. This is a round tank. So we've got rotating water, exit point, inlets on either side, so they point like that. So you've got rotating water in a tank, continuous culture, water in, effluent out, to a retention pond, back to wherever. So that's it. It's basically uh, the conversion of a prawn farm or utilisation of the algae cultures that occur within prawn culture. That, that would work extremely well. Uh, my tanks were 100,000 litre. The a depth of one point eight meters the flow rate here was four hundred liters per minute min that creates quite a substantial flow through here it's the shape of a round tank is such that the dead area occurs there where there's very little flow but in this culture zone around the outside of the tank is quite significant flow uh, and therefore uh, you can put 15 layers of trays so for every every square meter of surface area there are 15 square meters of culture surface so with Sydney rock oysters my feed has to be less than 25 microns because that's the maximum size of the feed that the oyster can get into its mouth so it's really simple how to achieve this is what we did was simply float fertilizer bags 
So we mixed our fertiliser in what we thought was about the right consistency, which is very similar. You, you're actually you're just growing plants, so the fertiliser rate is exactly the same. And anybody with the experience in growing algae for hatchery work will understand what's actually required. So you float this, you don't let it sink to the bottom. So by the time that water moves up to there, where there's a pump there, you have consistent levels of feed. I haven't done anything. All I've done is allow natural water in here and let the process take care of itself. So I come through here, I'm using a 1.5 kilowatt motor pump which is costing me roughly $10 per day to run. Very cheap labour for what, what is achieved. Uh, the stocking density here can be up to 300% of surface area. So if you've got a thousand oysters per square metre, you could actually grow these at 3,000 oysters per square metre. In the early stages, that's fine for spat, uh, no problem at all. Uh, as they start to grow, uh, there are issues with high stocking density. Uh, I'd be inclined for spat to go to something like 30, 30 trays, lower density. The reason for that is they grow so fast that they'll grow to each other and they clump. So because I was limited by the amount of tanks that I had and the abundance of oysters, I didn't want to kill any, so I overstocked. So every day I'd have to go around and shake, visibly shake these trays to stop the oysters from growing together. It wasn't a good idea, but uh, at the time, this, I mean, this was, this was the first pilot scale ever done, on, uh, ever, ever even attempted for land-based oysters. So it was uh, exciting as well as being a challenge. Um, so what we found by doing that constant flow rate, high flow rate, we got one millimetre of shell growth per day per oyster. These are unbelievably high growth rates. The oysters don't put on any condition whatsoever. They're in a juvenile state, so you take advantage of that to ongrow the oyster. So juveniles in here, high flow rate, uh, basically keep that going for about nine months. So what you have, you've graded your oysters, they've come out of here, gone through your grading machine and back into the system. Uh, and at nine months, the oysters are approaching 75 millimetre in length. It's fantastic. Uh, yeah, the exhilaration that was felt at the time was really fantastic. I thought we we're on a tremendous thing, and that's the danger point. As soon as you think you're on a winner, it can slide away from you so easy. It never pays to be in that frame of mind. Okay, so, if you were still using tanks and you, you've got these oysters, they're that big, which is great, and you've got uh, enough to fill several tanks, so you don't want them to get any bigger, you just want them to fatten up ready for market. They're already single oysters, they don't need to be graded anymore, so all you do is reduce the flow rate. Half the flow rate, double the feed rate. As long as you've got good levels of O2 in here, you can actually turn this off. So you can, you can, you can pump for an hour, turn off for an hour. You can pump for an hour, turn off for an hour. As long as your feed is in there and you're, you've got good levels of oxygen in here, these oysters will do just fine. Personally, I would go for a reduced flow rate 50% to 25% uh, based on observations of what's actually occurring 
when you slow the flow rate down and there's an abundance of feed, your oysters will fatten up and they will fatten up within two to three weeks. So there, there is an outline of your whole project. They're then ready to go to market somewhere around about 12 months. Normal process on a ranch, ranching application of oysters is 3.5 years. That's the reason for the potential of land-based oysters.